Hello, my name is Father Jude Eli. Welcome to Friars Feast, the Artist Celebration, where faith, family, and food come together. Well, today's program, it's ravioli day, and today we have Elsie Collins, who's gonna be cooking her version of ravioli, as well as mine. How many years have you cooked ravioli for your family uh, and friends? Well, help me with my mom, probably mm -hmm. about 30 years, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. today is ravioli today with a bona fide Italian nona. Stay tuned, it's ravioli on Friar's Feast. Today, I'm gonna make a very easy version. Elsie's gonna do the classical bolognese sauce with spinach and meat ravioli. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. So let's make the sauce. So let's add some olive oil to the sauce, to the pan. I believe the pan is up to temp. Yes, it is. Okay. So at this juncture, we're gonna add our onions. Did you hear the sizzle? That means that the uh, pan is up to temp. This is a very simple sauce. It's meatless. Okay. Let's add canned tomatoes. These are San Marzano tomatoes. Okay. And I want to add now uh, crushed garlic and crushed um, fresh Italian herbs. Such, and this, this has uh, the combination of oregano, thyme, and basil. This is about two tablespoons of crushed garlic. Let's put that in. Oh, boy, boy, does that smell good. Oh, my gosh. So now I'm going to add some orange zest. I'm going to add some orange juice. I'm going to add some bloom basil with this water. Going to add uh, some tomato pesto for body. Let's bring that up. Boy, does that smell good. Now I'm going to add a little bit of wine. This is about like a cup of wine, white wine. Not a sweet wine, but a dry wine. Let that come to a boil. And, uh, you know, many sauces have a little nutmeg, and I like to use nutmeg, so just a few. Fragrant. There we go, put that back. Now, before I go, I'm going to add just a little bit of butter to this. I'm going to add some now and I'm going to add some later on just to smooth it out. There we go. I wish you could smell this. I can smell the orange coming through. The tomato, uh, not just the canned tomato, but the tomato pesto. It really adds a wonderful and the butter is just blend, blending itself in. Oh, I love it. Remember, when you cook, you got to taste your food, folks, as you cook it. you got to do that. Don't presume that all because you've always done it this way without tasting that it will turn out the same way. Not necessarily. Let's see how it is. That did it. Okay, I'm going to put the lid on this and we'll let it cook. We'll be right back. Okay, now it's time to make the stuffing for the ravioli. So I'm gonna take two eggs. I'm gonna mix them up. Break the yolk, break the yolk. Okay, a little bit of salt and pepper. You know, I'm using double heat. You know, white, white pepper, white for bite, but black for burn, red for heat. That's why I like to use 
multiple peppers. This is the black and now our standby of red pepper flake. Okay. Let's put this together. So we're going to have one package of defrosted, squeezed dry, chopped spinach. Put that in. Get, get that incorporated. And yes, you'll probably realize I'll probably use my hands on this one. I'm sure I will. No, these are the best tools that God has ever created. Okay. Okay. Now, this is crumbled uh, salami. So I, I took about a half cup of salami, put it in the food processor. That's for a bite flavor. Then I have mortadella, Italian bologna for all practical purposes from Bologna, of course. So, so we have some mortadella. So we have some salami, see, double meat. Let's add at this point uh, about a cup and a half of fresh breadcrumbs, not, not, uh, not the dry ones, please. Uh, anyway, now we're going to add about a cup of ricotta or ricotta cheese, depending on for where are you from? There we go. And time for, now, when I was testing this recipe, you do need a lipid. Now, there's animal fat, there's vegetable, you know, olive oil. This adds a certain unction, a certain sumptuousness to the filling. You need your oil. You really do. I'm going to add a little bit of blue cheese, not much. Like I'm going to add like a quarter cup of blue cheese. I'm going to add mozzarella, about a half a cup. Notice multiple cheeses. Fennel, pollen. Fennel is uh, it's a vegetable. It's a root vegetable like celery, but it tastes like anise or like licorice, and uh, rather, rather than using uh, Italian sausage, which has fennel in it, I'm using fennel pollen instead. I want a little bit of nutmeg. I love fresh nutmeg. Let's see what we can do here. Ah, yeah. Perfect. See, that is one. See, notice there's moisture. That's the oil. That's what you want. See, that's exactly perfect. I'm going to put this together. It's God's creation. Okay, I'm going to let this sit for about a half hour or so, and then we'll come back and make our ravioli. Stay tuned. Here we have Pierre Auguste Renoir, Le Jardin de Vergemont, a copper plate engraving printed in black ink on wove paper after the original. One of 125 examples printed by Mordine Imperial de Paris in 1924 under the direct supervision of Renoir. This is a very scarce engraving. It's the garden. The garden of delight is the garden that feeds us so we get the fruits, the vegetables that we make into our food. And so we look at the garden as a means by which we encounter the bounty of God. I've, I've bought some wonton skins, such as these, huh? And uh, rather than rolling up my own pasta, a lot of chefs uh, do this type of thing and they, they uh, just have their own pasta this way, and it's quick, it's easy, it's very nice. Let's uh, flour the board. Okay, there we go. We don't want anything to stick. Let's take our first sheet of pasta.
Okay, the water's up to simmer. Uh, just a little word of caution here. <laughs> Many years ago when I did this uh, for a family, I was cooking for a dinner party of eight people. And this was like the antipasti, like the, you know, after, after the hors d'oeuvres. And so we had a little pasta dish and I made this and I, in an unfortunate way, uh, put it in a large pot, boiling water, <laughs> The, uh, the, uh, the fresh ravioli in, and it, of course, immediately fell apart. Did I learn from that mistake? Okay, what I have also are some frozen. And quite frankly, I think this is the way to go. So I'm gonna show you two ways. So we have some frozen, and we have some fresh. First, I'm gonna do the frozen ones. Now, see, about the same. I just lightly put them in. You don't, you don't uh, just dump them in. There we go. And maybe one more. That's it. I'll put those over to the side. I believe these are done now. Let's take them out of the water. to the side for a moment. Let's try the fresh. Now, these literally will take about 20 seconds. Beautifully translucent. And since there's no uncooked meat or meat product, you're just, you're just uh, reheating and they're starting to float. That means they're done. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, Father, let's get going here. Let's put the ravioli together. Okay. Now it's time for Elsie Marchetti Collins to do ravioli with bolognese sauce. Right. So, Elsie, tell us how you make your ravioli. Uh, this recipe uh, makes about a pound of pasta, two cups of flour, two eggs, two tablespoons of oil. Uh, we use regular oil, not the olive oil. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> two tablespoons of water and a teaspoon of salt. And two, did I say two eggs? Yes, you did. Okay, mm -hmm. all of this goes in the food processor, uh, and you mix it all together. And once it gets to the stage where it starts to stick together, mm -hmm. yeah. then we take it out and we put it on the pasta rollers, mm -hmm. sure. uh, the electric pasta rollers. I have a KitchenAid that works just fine. Wonderful. And uh, we roll it through number one about four times, and two go up to five till you get your sheets. Now uh, this is your uh, this is your my, stuffing. Tell me about your stuffing. Okay, my stuffing I usually make the day before, uh -huh. and I roast about a three and a half to four pound uh, chuck roast. Yeah, uh, and, and I might add chuck roast. Why? Because chuck roast is riddled and marbled with fat. 
and fat is flavor. Yes. So you don't want to use sirloin or anything like that. But a chuck roast is, you know, fat equals flavor, correct? Right. You got right. it. Go ahead. And then uh, I do a chicken, or you can do chicken breasts or chicken thighs, yeah. whatever, you know. And then I do a little bit of pork. Oh, and, wow. This and this is, is uh, all grounded up afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then um, usually before that, I, uh, I have fresh parsley, you mm -hmm. know, in my garden. You, so I get that mm -hmm. and this spinach. Spinach. That was my qu next yes, question. Yes, spinach. This looks like it's done with spinach. That's great. And um, saute it in butter and a little oh, olive oil. Fresh. And a little garlic. Oh, that's so neat. And uh, then that's all also grounded up. I also keep the drippings from the uh, the roast. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I put it in the freezer so I don't want any of the oil in there and not yeah. take that all off. Sure, sure. And uh, everything goes ground, grinds up together, you adjust your seasoning. Mm -hmm. I also put about a teaspoon or whatever you want of um, allspice. You got your salt and pepper. I put some <laughs> Parmesan cheese in yeah. there. And then after all that, uh, Bind it all together. I also put the oh I forgot to put the drippings in here <laughs> with um, some a little bit of uh, uh, French bread, yeah. and so that all goes grounded up in there also yeah. with a flavor from the drippings oh boy. and a um, little Parmesan cheese, and then about six eggs to bind it all together. Now I'm hoping I don't have too much filling in here because I usually this is a family affair. Oh yeah. My one daughter makes the pasta. Uh, another one spreads it for me. My son-in-laws roll it. So we just have a whole, we have a lot of fun putting all this together. That's what Friar's Feast is, where the family gets together, um, celebrates So now I need to, uh oh, oh need here. to get the top. You got that up there? Uh, yeah, I there don't want it to wrinkle here. up. let me help you. There I'm you only going to go that far. Okay, very good. How's that? That's good. Is that good? And then we have another one that, that cuts it. Mm -hmm. We put it in, in cookie trays that have been lined with wax paper and, mm -hmm. and flour and uh, tear them apart or cut them apart. Okay, now tell them about your roller. Oh, my this is an incredible story. Go my brother-in-law, Leonard Hansen from Yuba City, makes this for me. And uh, he said if anybody's interested, he'd make them for them <laughs> at 530 <laughs> I love it, Elsie. I love it. Oh, my God. So then we just Go put ahead. some pressure on here. Uh, this ravioli maker uh, fits the pasta just right. Oh, look at that. And it makes little pillows. I call them little pillows mm -hmm. of... Um, pasta you have to make sure if I put too much in here and I might have uh, it the dough will break just a little bit no it looks okay oh you're doing wonderfully look at that it's coming alive you know from the fruits of the earth we now have a yeah. food staple that has been a part of generations and generations families upon families well you know yeah. raviolis were first started probably because they had all this leftover food well, meat. Sure. Sure. Here you go. So uh, now tell tell me about that. Uh, this was from my grandmother, the the ravioli cutter that she brought over, and uh, so we just cut them. This is cuts and seals them at the same time. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Oh, Elsie, this is such a privilege to work with you today. You know, this is this is this is what I grew up with, and uh, what makes it nice yeah. when you have the whole family oh, together yeah. doing this. Everybody has their own job to do, mm -hmm. and you know we're laughing and have a glass of wine, wine. here and there, and <laughs> so yeah. it makes it makes it come out real nice. Yeah. Boy, that's. They're so, just well, perfect little pillows, aren't they? Right. So, well, so we don't want this side to go to waste, so we'll, we'll just put that over there. You put go. that over there and cut it also. And then these will go on cookie trays. Mm -hmm. 
Am I? I have to go this way. Is this yeah, okay? You do. Yeah. Why don't you go here? Okay. Here, here. I'll come over yeah, on that see. side. There you go. There you go. How about this? There. There, there we go. They look so beautiful. When my Nona used to make them, uh, her uh, pasta roller was larger, but she had huge tables just like this, like like the like the range. Well, she had tables as 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 big as these. And what she used to do, roll them out just like this, all all hand done. There. Yeah. That's beautiful. I'll then see. we have a cookie tray ready. Mm -hmm. That's been lined with wax paper and flour. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of scoop them up like so. There you go. There you go. But we need to put some flour yeah, on there. There we go. Mm -hmm. A little bench flour. Right. There we go. Then we. Um, Probably put about three layers there, mm -hmm. and wax paper in between, and then put them in the freezer. And the next day, we just tear them apart and put them in the Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. That one didn't want to come across. Yeah, right there. there. Must be not. Okay, Elsie. Now that you've rolled out mm -hmm. and cut the ravioli, let's put them in. Put in them the in, pot. The, in the water in here. The water. And these are the frozen ones that we've made before. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're in salted water. Once they've come mm -hmm. to another simmer boil and they come to the top, then uh, we're going to take them out and uh, put a layer of the sauce, mm -hmm. then the raviolis, and another a layer, layer of, sauce of sauce on top. Tell me about your bolognese sauce. How did you make it? Um, I um, usually chop up one onion, mm -hmm. um, a carrot, celery, probably about half a cup to three-fourths a cup of the celery and carrot. Mm -hmm. um, saute it in about a third a cup of olive oil. And then I have some fresh parsley that I uh, put in the food processor mm -hmm. along with about sure. four cloves of garlic. Good. Put that all in together and then add that to the sautéing. And then I add my uh, the meat, uh, probably about a pound and a quarter. What type of meat? Do you Just uh, beef, beef? Uh, ground round. And, you know, you can put uh, sausage or whatever you like. Mm -hmm. Just be real creative yeah. to suit your own taste. Does this have sausage in it? No, it doesn't. So that it's one, all beef, huh? All beef, yes. And... Uh, mm. After that, um, I put some uh, white wine mm -hmm. and let that simmer down. And then I add some uh, tomato paste, mm -hmm. cook that in so it get the raw taste out. Yeah. Then I put my two cans of uh, San Marzano. Yeah, right, you got it. And uh, yeah. whatever, you know, that's about it. Salt yeah. and pepper and a little bit of allspice in there. You know, her sauce is very different when, from any other sauce that I've had up in northern Italy. Like, for example, this summer, when I was with uh, Dr. Leo Gasperdoni, whom you'll see on another program, he and I went to his native rural uh, village in uh, Piedmonte, which is the region where my ancestors came from. And we went to his first cousin's house, named, and her name is Giovanna. And she made something analogous to this. She made her, her, uh, uh, her uh, stuffing for the ravioli out of pork and rabbit, okay. which is fascinating, yeah. Yeah, fascinating, with a little bit of spinach. And in fact, uh, we uh, took some great little uh, film of that. In fact, she's uh, talking with uh, Leo Gasperdoni, and she's telling, her, uh, she's telling him in Italian, and Leo's translating for me the recipe. And so we uh, do have that shot. But the point is that she uses rabbit. And unlike us, see, we were used to like, like a lot of sauce, not hers. No. You, you had almost like a nude ravioli with a little bit of sauce. Mm -hmm. That's why every region, every family, 
Every grandmother has their own recipe, and this is what Friar's Feast rejoices in. That you take things from the earth and you make it your own. You, you take your grandmother's recipe, your own recipe, and you nuance it. You add your personality to it, and it becomes your own so you could pass it on to the next generation. Let's see how these are. Okay. okay. Oh, oh I think my. They're just about ready. I think just, let's see. And try one. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Are they ready? Uh huh. Okay. Let's let's turn the heat off. And uh, here, let's get your pasta. In fact, uh, why don't you plate some of the sauce mm -hmm. on your uh, your plate? Let me remove this from you. There you go. Boy, is that the grandmother doing this? Look at, yeah, it's just spread it around. <laughs> I love it, Elsie. <laughs> this is Nona time. Well, you know, in Abadanza, right, honey? Right. Oh, I love it. And I anyway, love it. They don't use a lot of sauce, no, they even do not. in here. their spaghetti. Yeah, they here. Let they me say help you. Uh, we use go. too much. Listen, this has been, it's been an fun. absolute honor to have yeah. you on. Thank you. God Me love too. you. God Thank love you. you. Listen, this is Father Jude Eli, Friars Feast, Faith, Family, and Food. This is our ravioli show. Elsie, thank you for coming. Oh, Give my best I to your it. husband, Tom. I, I will. I will. And always remember, when you're feeding others, you're feeding the presence of God within them. Mm -hmm. Take care. God bless.